Okay, uh, let's talk about uh, sensor and instrumentation. Uh, today, uh, this is just a course introduction. Before we go deeper into the uh, topic each of the subject. So um, the purpose of the, this course is uh, giving students a solid understanding of sensors and instrumentation uh, that are used in many processes. Yeah, uh, we are talking about, we're gonna talk about the basic architecture of that sensors and the instrumentation, and then the signal conditioning that comprised of analog and digital, the interface between the sensors and the actually the brain, a PC or microcontroller or uh, data acquisition system and transmission and application of that. And then, of course, the purpose is to acquire knowledge and confidence in the art of scientific measurement. Yeah. So how we actually measure all these physical quantities, you know, physical entity, temperature, pressure, strain, acceleration, etc. And then how the instrumentation needed to actually uh, uh, to take the measurement, uh, the physical measurement, and then transport it or transform it and then uh, 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 transmit it to, uh, to where it is going to be processed further. Okay. So the question on sensor is what is actually sensor? We're going to uh, discuss this and how a sensor works. Of course, for different type of sensor, it might work differently uh, in principle. <laughs> but of course, uh, uh, as a general principle, principle they are the same. Uh, that do our bodies have sensors? Yes, of course. Otherwise, we cannot really touch, feel, sense, or taste. Yeah, those are our sensors. Why do we have or why do we need sensors? We'll discuss this, and hopefully, this will give us uh, give you. Uh, a good foundation to study the, the needed topics in this course. Let's look at first the open and closed loop control system. Uh, when we talk about open loop system, it's, uh, it's, it, it utilizes an actuating device to control the process directly without using feedback. So there is no feedback to the brain. There is no feedback to the controller or what happens in the system. So it looks like this. So we give the input, and then the actuators and we'll do something to the process or plant and then it will give an output of course whatever the output is is not being fed back to the input so that to be measured or to be make it to, to be made better or to make uh, uh improve or so on but on the other hand if we have closed loop control system the difference with the open loop control system is that uh this signal the output signal is being compared with the input the desired input so it looks like this so there is this hs that will tell the brain or the input or compare to the input what is the situation the condition the state of the output and how do we do that and we do it by sensing it yeah if it is talking about position then this is a position sensor if it is about pressure, this is a pressure pressure sensor. So this is this H thing. Let me put my laser pointer here. So this HS is a sensor. That's how it fits into a closed loop control system. Yeah. So if we look at it uh, bigger, a bit bigger on that, actually, when you see it, uh, the GC here is the controller, uh, whatever the controller you like to apply. And GS is the plant, and Y is the output, HS is the sensor. So the sensor is being fed back to the input being compared to the desired input here. Now, the, this yellow shaded uh, box is actually the brain. It can be microcontroller, PC, PLC, whatever it may be. Yeah. So this is the brain. So the, the, the sensor output will be... Uh, will be uh, received by the brain and then compared with the desired input and then then uh, it, it it energize or it controls the controller here to give output control to the plan and so on and so on. So this is how that sensor play a, a role in a closed loop control system. 
Okay. So what is sensor? Sensor is a device that receives and respond to a signal or stimulus and converts it to another signal. Yeah, that's a normally the, normally the signal is converted to electrical signal. Now, uh, I would like to just mention the difference between sensor and transducer. Of course, in this course, I will just call it sensor. That's the name of our the title of the course. Yeah, sensors and instrumentation. It doesn't mean that uh, uh, we are not uh, uh, talking about transducer, but transducer, what is the difference between transducer and sensor? Transducer is actually, uh, every sensor is a transducer, they said, but not every transducer are sensors. So transducer basically is more like an active uh, sensor. So it is like a conversion or, or transformation of uh, energy, from one form to another. Usually this is uh, uh, when we're talking about, let's say we measure uh, a position, we measure a uh, pressure, we measure uh, some kind of physical quantity, and then uh, a transducer uh, a sensor will somehow uh, 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 change something. For example, uh, uh, a resistant temperature detector. So if the temperature change, then the resistance value of that sensor will change. Yeah, that is a sensor. But if this sensor then uh, will be transforming its signal from that physical uh, resistance value and then compare it to, let's say, a voltage value to be uh, fed back to the uh, controller or to the PC, then somehow we can call it a transducer. Yeah, so uh, the conversion uh, to another uh, uh, quantity, to another entity, it makes it transducer, but it doesn't matter. All along this course, I will call it sensors. Yeah, so just for the easiness of mentioning it. So, but there is another one, sensor versus actuators. Actuators are, are actually the opposite the conversion uh, of uh, the energy conversion, uh, the vice versa energy conversion, the, the other way around. So if a sensor is converting signal from physical form to electrical form, then this one is the other way around, which is electrical signal to physical form, okay? Just a definition, yeah? Okay, how does sensor work? First, when the environment changes, this is how generally sensor works. So when the environment changes based on the sensor's type, then the sensor response could be uh, uh, the, 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 the charge in piezoelectric, piezoelectric uh, can be changed or in temperature uh, resistant detector, the, temper the temperature will change the, the value of uh, uh, the resistance. Similarly, when we're talking about um, uh, uh, pressure sensor, uh, things like that. Yeah. So then the, then the response provides a changing to the output signal. If we are connecting it to a circuit, uh, like a Whitson bridge, and then it will give a different output. And then the transfer function characteristic of the sensor depends on its nature, of course. Yeah. So that's how it works. So the physical uh, changes will change a physical uh, uh, quantity or characteristic of the sensor. That's how it goes. And then we transform it to another signal. So this is different type of sensor. You can look at it uh, quite a view. There's a piezo band sensors. You know, when you're bending something by pressure, then uh, the value change, uh, pyroelectric, and what else? Magnetic sensors. We have the proximity sensors, yeah, uh, because uh, we can check whether it is uh, made of uh, metals or not, and so on. There are so many of these. You can also Google it easily, yeah? And then, of course, the sensor is a part of measurement system. So it's always a part of measurement system. It's part of process control system. It's part of a, a bigger system, yeah? So when physical, physical variable, and then it is changing some, uh, stimulate some uh, physical quantity in the sensor, then the sensor when we call it before a transducer, so it changes it to electrical signal. And then this electrical signal, uh, somehow we need to condition it so that we can measure whether we filter it uh, to avoid to get rid of any uh, noises 
uh, any unnecessary uh, signals and then we can amplify it, linearize it and so on and so on. And then we can process it afterwards. This is talking about analog to digital uh, uh, converter. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, as part of system. So human uses various sensation method to explore our surrounding world. This is just a quick uh, 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 cover on our sensing. Yeah. Uh, our senses, a uh, vision, sound. Yeah. Light, vision, color, color shape, sound, the tone, the volume the frequency, things like that. So uh, uh, a smell, odor, taste, what else, touch, smooth, rough, feeling, hot, cold, and motion and all that. So this actually can, can be the basis of our uh, sensing uh, mechanism in the engineering world as well, yeah? Okay, so sense of performance can also be uh, classified to certain uh, characteristics. So accuracy, you know, you know, uncertainty is talking about the largest expected error between actual and ideal output. So you, you, you should, we should, as engineer, we should know this term. You know, uh, when we are measuring something, what is the question? The next question is, what is the accuracy of that value that you're measuring? Is it reliable? You know, if the accuracy is not is not so uh, uh, so small, if the accuracy is not so good then probably the whole measurement could be just uh, uh, bias. Discrimination, resolution. So uh, minimum detectable signal fluctuation, the resolution of your laptop, the resolution of your measurement is also very important. Sensitivity. What about the relationship about your input and the output? If you change the output uh, a lot, but the, if you change the input a lot, but the output is just changing a little bit, probably it's not very sensitive. So that should be also in, uh, taken into consideration. Span and dynamic range, the range of your measurement. Uh, does it cover the needed uh, measurement or not? Yeah. Uh, linearity, you know, there is a deviation in every, every measurement that we do. If it is not so linear, then probably we cannot really come up to a good conclusion or a straight conclusion saying that possibly we want to say that if you keep increasing the input, the output will be increased. Well, for non-linearity, probably is not the case. So linearity is also must be taken into consideration. Hysteresis, it is also about uh, when we have uh, different input, uh, uh, the same input can result in different output. Yeah. So when it is cycling up, when it is cycling down, going back to the original uh, input, it doesn't go the same way as is. Uh, it doesn't go back the same way as it is, uh, and it is going before. Yeah, noise, random error, signal noise. We should avoid this. That's why we need filter and so on and so on. Okay. So sensor classification. Uh, sometimes we call it based on power supply, active and passive. Yeah. So active, like ultrasonic, it means that it is active because it is keep sending signal. And then when there is uh, changes in the in the receiver, so transmit and then will receive. Like a, for example, ultrasonic wants to know what is the uh, the distance of a, of an object, so it keeps sending signal. So when there is something passing uh, uh, before the the, uh, the the transmitter, and then it will be reflected back, then it can measure, uh, it can sense that there is some object on the way in the way. So it means active, but thermocouple, uh, passive uh, sensor are sensors that are not really uh, uh, active, of course, uh, in a way that it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, trigger the measurement. It doesn't trigger the the process. It's just waiting. Thermocouple waiting for the temperature to increase, and then the thermocouple will be having some uh, changes. Then that's when the sensor is, is is sensing something based on the nature of the output signal. Of course, you know it. Digital signal, analog signal, like encoder. Encoder when we are measuring uh, uh, a rotation of something using uh, uh, infrared, for example, then it will just say on and off, on and off, things like that. But piezoelectric is act, uh, is analog because uh, whatever the pressure that you put on the on the uh, on the ceramic or on the sensor uh, material, then it will give. Uh, a real uh, number output, things like that. So it is analog. And then finally, based on the operation, operational mode, there are two deflection by deflection by null mode. Null mode is you have to reset it to 
let's say now or zero, like a balance weight. You know, if you measure it when the when it's not it is not null mode, then at the null mode uh, uh, state, then it is not valid. While strain gauge is best by deflection. Let's say it is uh, whatever the state is. That is the normal uh, 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 measurement, the normal value. So when we are uh, measuring something and it deflects, then we know it is having a certain value from that deflection. Okay. So classification, I would say, uh, based on input and output dynamic relation, there are first order system and second order system. We we're just discussing uh, even in the in the previous semester. Maybe you study the uh, system response or of an of a components response in a transfer function i would say uh, when given a certain input so what will be the the behavior so the behavior of course there are third order fourth order usually we are simplify simplifying it uh, to first order and second order because higher order usually uh, can be uh, uh, simplified, I would say, to first order and second order, even though it's not as that easy, but uh, because the, the, the constraint of this study uh, is not uh, is not within the, the higher order. So we're just focusing on the first order and second order. And then based on the measurement, so we're talking about mechanical, which is displacement sensor, LPDT, Compact displacement sensor or uh, reflective uh, RDS uh, displacement sensor, pressure sens sensor, strain gauge, force sensor, acceleration sensor, thermal, yeah, RTD. I was I was mentioning resistance temperature detector, thermistor, thermocouple, magnetic, you know, radiant, photodiode. This is like a ray, and then chemical gas sensors, and then based on physical measurement variables. So how it varies, like resistive, capacitive, inductive sensor. So these are the sensor classification. Why do we need sensor? Of course, the emerging of smart technology, everything needs sensor because uh, we want to respond to a certain state. Yeah. So smart smart quarter system needs smart sensors. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, how can I be how can I be smart if my input is not smart? You know? Uh, and secondly, using sensor in relation with the control system, it increases the efficiency and effectivity. Yeah. So like our air condition at home. So it has sensor. So when we want it to be in 20 degrees, so it will try to reach 20 degrees Celsius temperature, but it will stop as soon as uh, the compressor will stop as soon as it is reaching 20 degrees. So then the compressor will 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 stop for a while yeah so it means that it is reducing the usage of the fuel or the electricity and sensor technology can be used as data logging in real time and long distance monitoring of course when we can put it especially in the internet of things this day iot then we can put our sensors and then we can log the data in real time and then we can also monitor it from a distance so it's is 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 magnificent these days yeah an application, yeah, there are three here. Application for measurement, instrumentation, monitoring of processes and operation. Secondly, control processes and operation. So we will monitor and then we control it. And then we are doing experimental engineering analysis in the lab. So what we can do about it, what we can improve, things like that. Yeah. First, Monitoring of processes and operations. So this is referring to situation where the device is being used to keep track of some quantity. So we may not monitor it. So we want it to be at this certain level. Then in that case, we need to keep tracking it. So otherwise we are losing a uh, uh, point or target. Simply indicate the condition of the environment. Yeah, what are the condition of environment? An example, thermometer, barometer, radar, anemometer, and flow meter. This is also an input so that we can make a decision. And second about control processes and operation. This is this is uh, looking like uh, this is looking like the block diagram of a, of a system process operations. So there is input to the process. There are also disturbances, and then it outcome the control variable, and then we measure using sensor measuring instrument and then also in that uh, and then we put back this is 
similar to my block diagram before, but the the shape, uh, the the orientation is a bit different, but actually it is the same. The sensor uh, being fed back to the controller, and the controller also will compare the desired value and the real value, and then uh, gives to a final control element so that it can do something with the process also, yeah? And then this is uh, like a home automation. If you look at this, how uh, one certain uh, uh, point can control uh, or monitor many things, yeah? It can control the auto gate, the gate of the house, uh, lightings, uh, home entertainment. You can just turn it off and turn it on through this connection, whether it is local alien network or whether it is uh, uh, controlled by internet, yeah, a long a distance control, water heater, curtain, uh, things like that, everything, yeah, everything can be connected to internet. Look at that. Uh, so we can even look at uh, the CCTV uh, uh, and so on and so on. So this is just an example uh, picture I took uh, uh, from the internet. Okay, the engineering system, a more general diagram for how is it done? So when you look at this, this is mechanism system and then sensor actuators and electronic device. If you look at it, the home, uh, smart home before, that uh, the physical quantity, which is the mechanism, is doing something and then giving power, uh, okay, receive power and then do some activity. And then because it is uh, making changes, in physical world, then the sensor will take that and then change it to electrical signal using electronic device uh, for the control. And then when it is having a decision what to do, then it will send signal to the actuators, can be motors, for example, uh, just run faster, run slower, and then uh, do some more mechanism, just like smart home, yeah? Just like smart home in terms of uh, opening your gate, in terms of turning up the volume of your entertainment uh, uh, music, uh, turning up the, the light, turning down, dim, dim, dim the light, and so on and so on. So this is, this is actually what happens then. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So there are sensors, actuators uh, can be summarized into this simple uh, four block diagrams. <clears throat> okay. Let's look at our uh, topic focus uh, just on this course. First, of course, we will talk about process control instrumentation. Yeah, We'll talk about the objectives here. We'll talk about how a process control block diagram, how to evaluate the system, and then how the analog and digital processes happening. Of course, we also may uh, mention a bit about uh, unit standards and definition so that we can go on uh, with full understanding what we are talking about. And then of course, there is a sensor time response. This is in the uh, part uh, in the part we call as process control instrumentation. And then of course, significance and statistics. And part B uh, is also talking about signal conditioning, analog, yeah? So the principle of analog signal, signal conditioning, talking about passive circuits, we contains a resistor, capacitors, and the circuit, simple circuits, OPAMs, we'll talk about OPAMs, and then OPAMs within the instrumentation. You know, OPAMs we use to uh, magnify signal uh, uh, so that we can process it further. Yeah. And then what is the guide of the design? Later, we'll have a, a good examples uh, or practices. Yeah. See, and it was before analog and now digital signal conditioning. So we're talking about uh, the things that probably this, we studied before, discrete mathematics, Boolean algebra, 1010 one, comparator, how to compare them. And then of course, there's the converters, digital to analog and analog to digital, ADC and DAC, and then some application. And then we'll do some exercises also. And then thermal sensors, uh, RTD, thermistor, thermocouples, and others, bimetal solid state, we'll, we'll just cover gen, the general uh, sensors of that. At least we know the principles of it. And then mechanical sensors, displacement, location, position, strain, motion, pressure, flow sensors, and so on. Yeah. So this is what will uh, change the physical quantity. That's what we call mechanical. And optical sensors, 
uh, talking about electromagnetic radiation, the frequency wavelength spectrum, and also power intensity. We'll cover a bit of that. And then photoconductive, photovoltaic, and photo emissive type for photo detectors. So this is detecting or sensing something due to uh, 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 optical or photo uh, type of uh, uh, signal. Principle and structure of both total radiation optical parameters and then how we can dis, uh, distinguish between uh, incandescent atomic and laser light sources, yeah, characteristic of light. Yes, uh, and then the design of application optical techniques to process control measurement applications. Yeah, we'll, we'll also discuss, uh, we'll discuss uh, in the class uh, about our uh, semester project, we will design, I mean, this is a group project, we'll design a certain type of sensors, yeah. So we'll talk about it more in class, but I think that's all for now for the course introduction. Thank you. Yeah, let me just stop this. I'll see you later. Bye.